When an irresistible force beats an immovable object, something's got to give. Something's got to give, and something will give this afternoon here in Baltimore. As NBC Sports presents the AFC Divisional Playoff Game, the Pittsburgh Steelers against the Baltimore Colts. Brought to you by Chrysler Corporation and your Dodge dealer, who invites you to buy or lease the unbelievable 77 Dodge Aspen. By the Gillette Track 2 Shaving System, the closest thing to a perfect shave. By Firestone, who offers customer satisfaction coast to coast, wherever you see the Firestone sign. Ask a friend about Firestone. And by Avis, the car rental company that tries harder. The irresistible force, the number one offense in the National Football League, that of the Baltimore Colts. The immovable object, the number one defense in the National Football League, that of the Pittsburgh Steelers. The Baltimore Colts this year scored 417 points. The Steelers only gave up 138. Total yardage this year, a club record for Baltimore, 5,236. But the Pittsburgh defense gave up about 2,000 yards less. Yards rushing, 2,309 ground out by Baltimore, but only 1,457 given up by Pittsburgh. It is the irresistible force and the immovable object, not us. I'm Tim Simpson with John Brody, and we've got a crowd behind us. John, I would say that this is one of the worst places for an opposing team to play. Having played here several times, Jim, it is the worst place. It's the greatest place if you're the if you're the home club in Baltimore, but you don't want to play against them. All right, the big question. What do you think? What do I think of all the statistics? I right. think that they're they're composed of so many elements that that go into contributing to a great defensive football team like Pittsburgh has. Uh, people like Franco Harris and Rocky Flyer. Now they gained a thousand yards. It's only been done once before in professional football. And that was also done by a group behind an excellent offensive line. They have both of those things, all right? Uh, so I really don't put a whole lot of credence on one particular area of it. All right. Now, you've said about Pittsburgh. What about Baltimore? Everybody talks about their offense. Defense had to get them here also. You don't score four, 417 points, Jim, unless your defense is giving you good field position. There's has. Unless you get to the quarterback some. They got 57 sacks. Now, at the beginning of the year, Marcia Broder said, hey, you guys, don't expect to get 59 sacks. They didn't, but they only fell too short. So, I mean, they have a, a total group of people on both squads, and uh, I don't think any one particular area should stand above the rest. Well, you know, on Grandstand, we heard from Terry Bradshaw. We heard from Burt Jones. Ted Marcia Broder said, this ball club was 2-12 two, two years ago, and along came Jones. He is a fine quarterback. On the other side, you have Terry Bradshaw, but a rookie, Mike Kruzek, started six of their final nine games and won them all. There's no doubt that, uh, that Burt Jones is one of the two finest quarterbacks playing the game today. This year, he and Kenny Stabler had far superior years to everyone else. Fran Parkinson had another ordinarily great year. Uh, but when you take a look at the situation in Pittsburgh, you've got Bradshaw, who had a so-so year. It hasn't really played much. I think he's starting because he took him to two Super Bowls. If he doesn't get going well, Cruiser can do the job. It's a nice situation to be in. I think you can tell that we have some excitement here at Memorial Stadium in Baltimore. And we're going to come back to that excitement in just a moment. But right now, as the crowd goes wild, we'll go away for about one and a half minutes. Jimmy, they are about to kick off. It, it's getting a little exciting out here. Uh, I feel like I'm playing. <laughs> I'd like to repeat again what John Brody did say. Having been a quarterback down on the field, John commented before coming on the air that this is the one place where a crowd can intimidate an opposing quarterback. The problem is, Jim, your receivers can't hear you. Now, as much as... Uh, as Pittsburgh throws the ball, and they do throw it effectively, it's necessary to hear what your quarterback is saying. It affects your count. It affects everything. They've got a guy up in the second deck who seems to get the whole upper deck pumping C-O-L-T-S just about the time you're trying to call signals, so it can be a bit distracting. Ernest Pugh is in the middle there, 85. Jack Delaplane is out with a bad knee. T-Bell, 83, and Frenchie Fuqua, 33, the other receivers. But Pugh is the man in the middle as Tony Linhart kicks off. And this will be Pugh at the three-yard line. To the 10. The 20, and down he goes with quite a shot. The ball is loose. At the 23-yard line, and belongs to the Steelers. Looks like Frenchie Fuqua. Doesn't take the ball. long to get things started. Now, this is the first bounce of the ball as Fuqua comes back. And he is really hit hard by a, by a combination of people when the ball leaves. Bounces in the right direction. Somebody was trying to help Pugh out. He happened to be in the right spot, and they still maintain the ball. Pugh is led off the field. Jack, Jack Delaplane, also a kickoff returner, is already out. Defensively for Baltimore. 
The front four will be Fred Cook, 72, Mike Barnes, 63, Joe Ehrman, 76, John Dutton, 78. Your linebackers, Darrell Luce, 58, Jim Chayunsky, 59, Stan White, 53. And the deep men, Lloyd Mumford, 42, Ray Oldham, 25 at the corners, Bruce Laird, 40, and Jackie Wallace, 20 to safety. First down, the ball's with the 22. Lewis, wide left, swindle to the right. Franco Harris. Harris gets three yards out to the 25. Chuck Noll says about Franco Harris that he plays 110% of his effort throughout the entire season and then jumps up to about 150%. And against these Colts last year in the playoff, he got 153 yards. I've always wondered how you get better than 100% at any time, Jimmy, but he definitely keeps getting better. Well, in playoff games, he scored nine touchdowns in his career. Second down, seven. Rocky Blyer pursued and dragged out by number 59, Jim Kajemski, the middle linebacker. Lost on the play of the yard. It'll be third down and eight. Kajemski, a nine-year veteran from Syracuse. John Starworth comes in. Larry Brown, a tight end, goes out. So now they have Frank Lewis, John Starworth, and Lynn Swan. All in the ball game. Brian Salter comes in. Triansky comes out. So the five defensive backs in for Baltimore on third and eight. Bradshaw. Bradshaw going deep for Lewis. He is there. He's got it. And he will score. Third down eight from the 24-yard line. A 76-yard pass. Unbelievable play, Jim. The offensive line gave Bradshaw enough time to allow Frank Lewis to go all the way down into a into a deep zone, make his move on a deep on a deep zone. Man, just kind of outran the zone. You can see Bradshaw standing back there four or five seconds. This ball had to travel 65 yards in the air, right on the money to Lewis. And the job is all done by now. Well, Baltimore, if it has a fault in its pass defense. The average completion against Baltimore, not too many completions, for better than 15 yards. When you do complete one against Baltimore, it usually goes for big yardage. And that went for 76 yards and the first score of the game. Roy Girella, who's been suffering with a full calf muscle but kicked rather well against Houston last week, in to drive the extra point with Bobby Walt in the hole. High pass from center, the kick is up, and the kick is no good, and Girella... Bothered as he has been, misses that extra point. That's, you know, it's, it's been a problem for the guys that go sideways uh, kicking the ball. They have to make their move when the ball snapped. If there's anything off, out of, out of whack from the, in the delivery from the center to the holder, it causes him to hesitate, stop a little bit, and oftentimes to push or pull the ball out of the goalpost. At Three River Stadium in Pittsburgh, of course, they do have artificial turf. Roy Girella spent this last week working out on grass. There's the grand old man of the Pittsburgh Steelers and perhaps of the entire National Football League, Art Rooney, the owner and president of the Steelers that didn't have a champion for so long and now is looking for his third consecutive Super Bowl championship, something no one has done. Now, Girella will kick off, and that is little Howard Stevens, five feet, five inches. He scored a touchdown last week, and they said set a record for the shortest spike in National Football League history, <laughs> five feet, five inches. Three plays on third and eight, 76 yards for the touchdown. And now the question becomes, can Baltimore move against Pittsburgh? Gorilla kicks it along the ground, an indication that that leg is not good. It'll go out of bounds, so he'll have to kick it again from the 30. Bruce Laird and Ron Lee were around the ball and allowed it to go out of bounds. And so now Gorilla will kick off from the 30. There was a story in the Pittsburgh paper that Gorilla had problem with infected lymph glands and sent the infection up through his stomach and affected his kicking. Now someone else, whether it be a medical person or someone I don't know, came out and said that can't be so. What is really so, he's got a slightly pulled calf muscle. Whatever the reason, Roy Girella has not been kicking well lately. Jim, men he mentioned that uh, last week in Houston that, hey, you know, you only have room for one kicker on a squad. And if you're a little bit hurt, that's just the way it goes. You better kick anyway, and you better kick well because there are only 26 jobs around here. I guess there's 28 now. Chuck Noll. His team was one and four. And now it is ten and four. Along just 28 points over the last nine games and only two touchdowns in the last nine games. Baltimore has its work cut out. 
Again, the low kick off the hands of Lee, off the hands of Laird, and now he picks it up. Fuqua, and then Lauren Taves gets him at the 30. A very poor run back of a kick that could have been handled a little bit easier, but when a ball oblong as that football is gets out there, it's difficult. Burt Jones, number seven. Lydell Mitchell over 1,000 yards, 26. Roosevelt Leaks primarily a blocker, 48 the running back. Wide receivers, look out for Roger Carr, 81, 11 touchdowns. Glenn Dowdy, 35. Tight end, Raymond Chester, 87. Your board wall, David Taylor, Bob Pratt, Ken Mendenhall, Elmer Collette, and George Coons and the Steelers defense in a moment. Lionel Mitchell, no place to go, but he wedges out a couple of yards. And now for that Steeler defense that we'll be watching, number one in the National Football League today. The front four, L.C. Greenwood, Joe Green, Ernie Holmes, and Dwight White. Your linebackers, has anybody got a better trio than this? Jack Ham, Jack Lambert, and Andy Russell, who says this is his last year. Your cornerbacks, J.T. Thomas, 24, Mel Blunt, 47. He'll be on Roger Carr. And your safeties, Mike Wagner, 23, and Glenn Edwards, 27. Second down, and seven to go. Roosevelt leaks a couple of yards out to the 35, and it is third down and five. White White made the stop. Our telecast presented by authority of the National Football League intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or the use of this telecast without the express written consent of the Baltimore Colts and the National Football League is prohibited. If you just joined us, a 76-yard touchdown bomb, Bradshaw to Lewis on third and eight. Jarella missed the extra point. And it's 6-0 already. Carr goes wide left. Dowdy comes to the right. Don McCauley comes in. Will do some blocking for Burt Jones in a passing situation. Five defensive backs for the Steelers. Jones with excellent protection. Has his man who drops the football. That's Lido Mitchell. Would have been a first down at the 45. If this trend continues, Jim, and I have every reason to expect that it will, uh, we'll get to it in a second. Let's take a look at Lido Mitchell. He will be a prime receiver today because he's covered man-to-man -man by Andy Russell. As you can see, Andy backed off the line, knew he had it man-to-man -man the whole way. I'm sure Jones picked it up and was able to come to him. He usually catches those kind. Five-yard penalty offside, John. And here's Pat Haggerty. First down. But you started to say about the trend. And I was mentioning that you know, with the outstanding wide receivers that Baltimore has, I fully expect uh, Pittsburgh to use double, double both wide receivers and put the, put the linebackers in a real bind. They're going to have to cover Lydell Mitchell all over the field one-on-one. -on -one, and Roosevelt Leach is going to have to have a big day. Both wide receivers to the right, Carr and Dowdy. Jones rolling that way, throwing for Dowdy off the hands of Jack Ham. Cannot contain the ball at the 50-yard line. Ham has a couple of interceptions this year, but of course he has been a leader in intercepting the ball for several years for the Steeler linebackers. Out of Jack Ham who says Burt Jones is the key. At that time he almost turned the key. Well, Jack Ham is the quarterback's nightmare because he, he gives you a look that you think you have. You think you have a hole, and he's just lulling you to sleep. He moves like a gazelle. And uh, he seems to get the balls just in time, but he knows he's going to get there beforehand. Carr again goes back to the left. That's Flyer being taped on the sideline. Dowdy to the right. Well, I think you can see Mean Joe Green. He came across the line. Question was he drawn across or not? <laughs> Jack Lambert is arguing with the officials, so I would assume it is against the Steelers. Another five-yard offside penalty. This is the second. The first was on third and five. This makes it second and five. First one, number 75, defense. Second and five from the 45. That's Dowdy in motion. Lido Mitchell running for the second time today and again does not get much yardage. It'll be third down and about three. 
You'll see Dwight White down at the bottom of the pile. You will see Jack Lambert down at the bottom of the pile. And J.T. Thomas is a fellow that was able to come in and make his containment a lot closer to, to, to the offensive tackle because they had a man in motion. He actually stopped the play. Jack Ham takes himself out. For what reason, I do not know. Uh, equipment problems, it looks like. And Lauren Taves takes over the left linebacker spot. And Pauley comes back in to join Mitchell. Third and short. You wonder on this short of yardage situation whether or not Jones will actually throw. He's set up to throw and is going to throw. Again looking for Mitchell and has him first down. Run out of bounds by Glenn Edwards, number 27. First down as they move into Steeler territory at the 47. Again, you see, he's, a he's on a linebacker man for man. Now, Glenn Edwards picks it up late. However, it's not his responsibility to cover Lydell Mitchell. He just picked it up after he caught the ball on a six-yard out. All at the 47-yard line, 10.48 to go. We're just in the first quarter of a very noisy game. Lydell Mitchell has, well, you can see his total, rushing 1,200 yards. And I think you know that Lydell Mitchell and Franco Harris from the same backfield at Penn State. Kurt Jones going on first down, looking for Roger Carr, maybe under throw, and it is picked off by Mike Wagner. Wagner's across the 20, holding the ball out like a loaf of bread, and Roosevelt leaks, and Burt Jones makes the tackle. Jim, what happens is Burt thought he had him man on man down the field. He did uh, the whole way. Uh, Wagner's just kind of floating over to take the ball as it comes into play, and that's just a mistake he doesn't want to make. 10.36 to go. We've got a long way to go. We're in the first quarter. The Steelers lead it 6 to nothing. Taking another look at this play, you see that Burt Jones is running a play-action pass. Now, at the line of scrimmage, Pittsburgh's defense faked the blitz. He thinks it's a blitz. He thinks Carr's one-on-one -on -one out there, which he is not. It's just a well-conceived defense by Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh has had that one big play of 76 yards. Lewis comes to the left. Swan is to the right. Frankie Fuqua is in. Liar is not. First man through is big Franco Harris. We'll try to check the Steeler bench to see if there's something wrong with Rocky Blyer. We did not see him get hurt, but Frenchy Fuqua is starting this series along with Franco Harris. Bruce Laird, the strong side safety, made the stop. Lewis goes out. John Starworth now comes in as wide receiver for the Steelers. But Swan and Starwood. And it's second down and four at the 28. Franco Harris slips out of one tackle and the strong side safety Bruce Laird makes the stop. Number 40. That's a loss on the play. And we go back to third and long. Last time the Colts were in expecting the run or a short pass over the middle, and Jackie Wallace found himself trailing Frank Lewis 76 yards on the touchdown bomb from Terry Bradshaw. It's got to loosen things up a little bit, Jim, when somebody stings you for 76 yards. Uh, <laughs> you can't play him too tight. Lewis back in and to the left. Juan right. Bradshaw, lots of time, gets it away for Lewis. He's got it. First down across the 50 at the 46-yard line. Wallace, again the man on the play, and made the tackle. Beautiful throw on the part of Terry Bradshaw. Let's take a look at Lewis. Bradshaw's looking to the right. He comes back to the left late, trying to draw the linebackers out of position. As you can see, he hit just in front of Shiansky and Wallace. Perfect throw under him, and they, they had a pretty well defense. Well, they talk about the Pittsburgh defense. They talk about the running of Blyer and Harris, two 1,000-yard men. And we talked about the fact that Bradshaw has not had a great year. Injury and other problems. He's having a great first quarter thus far. First down 10 from the 45. This is Franco Harris trying to get outside. And Wallace comes up quickly and knocks him down. They say about Franco Harris, if he ever turns up field, look out. But if you can spring him out one way or the other, you got a shot. Well, the interior line had strung Franco out that time. The linebackers really strung him all the way out to where Jackie Wallace was forcing from his safety position had a pretty good shot at Franco if he missed that tackle it would have been a very bad play Rocky Blyers had his greatest year ever 1036 yards a foot injury has gone to the locker room to see just how bad it is that's why Frenchy Dupley is in there second down and ten 
Bradshaw throwing on second down. Has time, floats it, may be picked off. Off the hands of Wallace as a flag thrown in the vicinity of Stan White, where he was with Frenchy Fuqua. Don't know if we have it, Jim, but I do know that uh, both Stan White and Fuqua got all tangled up in there. And it's going to be against Stan White, and that'll be a first down. And you wonder if Pittsburgh jumps out to a couple of touchdown leads. With that great defense that they've had, they've only allowed two touchdowns in nine games. How tough enough he'll drive it would be for the Colts. And those two touchdowns were both scored by Houston late in the season, Jim. That's eight games without giving up any. They'll put the ball down at the 31-yard line. Six to nothing. Not even half of this first quarter over yet. Franco Harris trying to get outside, turns it up and only gets to the 30 yard line. A pickup of a yard. And it'll be second down and on. And thus far, Harris has been contained, but Bradshaw and Lewis have not. The cornerbacks have forced very well. That time, Lloyd Mumford came up made the play turn in. They, they really didn't have it as well strung out as they'd like. He, he had a little lane, but Mumford just kind of shut it all down. Let's take a look. Here comes Lloyd. He knows it's a running play. He's got to come in. Lynn Swan is his man. He ducks underneath the play, forces it in, and they pull him down. Second down nine. Little swing pass out to Fuqua, and Fuqua gets down near the 25-yard line. Upended across the way by Darrell Luce. Down at the bottom of the pile, a left side linebacker. And again, it's a big third down situation. And thus far, the Steelers have come up golden on two third down situations. They have, and it makes you it makes you to think that maybe, you know, they're sacrificing a bit. They're going to stop the run. They're going to shut him down. They're going to try and get him into a throwing situation because they haven't thrown the ball as effectively this year as they have in the previous two. And uh, I think they burned them when they had to. Again, three wide receivers, Lewis, Scarworth, and Swan on third down and six. Look out, Baltimore did not touch anybody, so that's legal. Now a flag goes down, two flags go down. There's Lynn Swan off his hands at the five-yard line. What happened is Fr Frenchy Fuqua saw the blitz coming. He knew he, he was in a position where he could not get the linebacker coming up the middle of the field, so he moved up, and while he moved up, the ball was snapped, and that's an automatic uh, in-motion penalty. And that's what Pat Haggerty is signifying to us. So I would assume that they will refuse that penalty and make it fourth down. That's their option. <laughs> Haggerty almost <laughs> gets stripped up himself. Okay, Pat. Motion, number 33, offense declined. Now then comes Roy Jarella, and let's see what kind of foot he has got here now. We've talked about the full calf muscle, the fact that he's not been kicking well. This will be a kick of well over 40 yards. And he has been actually more effective outside the 40 than he has been between the 20 and 30. Well, you know, really, uh, you notice when he kicked off, he didn't try to, pump, to boot the ball all the way down into the end zone because he is losing a little distance with this injury. However, he's, I'm sure the adrenaline flow is pretty high, and uh, he wouldn't be kicking it if he didn't figure he could, he could get it 45 yards. 45-yard attempt. Kick is up from 45 yards out. Jarella gets three more points on the board with 6.30 to go. And they are happy for him because he's had a tough time in recent weeks. Pittsburgh, nine. Baltimore, nothing. And the Colts will get the ball when we come back. Let's kick that 45-yard field goal and we'll kick off again. Howard Stevens, the up man at the 10. 20. 30, runs right into Marv Kellum, number 54, at the 31-yard line. And look at Howard Stevens. He's going to take on Kellum. <laughs> Kellum is 6'2", 25. Howard Stevens is 5'5", about 160. Well, they stopped him at the 30-yard line. They're still running him backwards at the 15. I can understand him getting a little hot. Take a look at a guy that's done an outstanding job on special teams for several years, Donnie Shell. He's also a fine, a fine defensive back. 
but he's got a tough job. He's down there in the middle of all the action. That time he got a little help before he could get there. Roger Carr goes out to the left, Dowdy to the right. Baltimore's well, going to try to get something moving, and Rydell Mitchell isn't moving very far, is he? Shut down rather quickly. A year ago, Rydell Mitchell averaged less than two and a half yards against the Steelers in the playoffs, picked up only 63 yards on 26 carries. And a year ago, the Colts only got 82 yards all day long running the ball. And I think most people have picked up yardage on the, on the Steelers with draw plays. And they pretty much give them away. They put their defensive linemen with no, no draw responsibility at all. Second down, nine. Mitchell on a quick opener as the flag goes down. Gets to the 35. A gain of three yards. But in backfield in motion, or legal motion in the line, is the... Initial signal. 5.41 to go, first quarter. The number one offense in the National Football League against the number one defense in the National Football League. But right now, it looks as though the Steelers offense hasn't been that bad at all. Of course, the Steelers have the number one rushing offense in the National Football League and 12th in the AFC passing. I was going to say, it never has been bad. <laughs> Offense. You think he doesn't get ready, Jack Lambert, before the ball is centered? <laughs> That's a dance I think we'd all like to learn. They point out to me, John, that he plays a little bit deeper than most middle linebackers and thus gets better pass coverage. He stays back and he's got the quickness to move in. He does, but he's also very quick in filling the hole. Lambert is now out. Jim Allen comes in as a fifth defensive back on third down and six. McCauley comes in as a blocker for Bert Jones. Jones rolls out, looks for Raymond Chester. Chester, first down, 46-yard line. A tight end from Oregon State right here in Baltimore, Maryland. As you can see, Bert Jones is looking for a little extra time. He's got to fire that ball down the field, 13, 14 yards. Donnie Shell's on him man-to-man. -man. He picks the right man. Excuse me, that's uh, Jimmy Allen. Picks the right man out, puts it right on the money. Well, I won't say right on the money. I guess Chester did make a pretty fine catch. <laughs> From the 46-yard line, first down, nine to nothing, Pittsburgh. Five minutes to go, first quarter. Car left, Dowdy right. They show us the eye formation. Lionel Mitchell, first time he's gotten, well, he picks up three yards this time. Second down, seven, out to midfield. Andy Russell, should the Steelers lose this game today, Andy Russell will have played his last game. Even if the Steelers go to the Super Bowl, he will have played his last year. And the word I get, Ray Mansfield, a 13-year veteran, a center, probably will announce later on that he is going to call it quits, too. Second down and seven. That's Mitchell again. A little crowded in there, but he does get into Steeler territory. Jack Ham is the initial tackler. Number 59, his equipment problems are over, and he is in. And again on third down. And about three yards, and so McCauley comes in on third down, as he does on every, nearly every third down situation. Rocky Blyer has a sprained toe. Indications are he can play again. Car to the left, down to the right. Looking over the middle, Raymond Chester, first down at the 42-yard line. Hit down by Jack Ham. Jim, Raymond Chester has not been one of their primary receivers. However, when they double both your outsides and they're in and out and on your halfback and fullback, Ray Chester is covered by a linebacker. Even though Jack Ham is the man, they put him in a position of covering him all over the field. You've got to come to him and make something happen. Ball is at the 41-yard line, first down. This drive started at the 31-yard line of Baltimore. Jones to throw on first down. Excellent protection. Now decides to run. Gets the ball to Mitchell. Steps around Jack Ham. Inside the 25. Down to the 20-yard line goes Lydell Mitchell. First down, Baltimore. Glenn Edwards makes the tackle. 
beautifully conceived play. It's a play action pass. It's the kind of play you dream of if you're a, if you're a quarterback. He gets great protection. You see Glidell Mitchell just hanging around. He sees Jones in trouble. Everybody's covered downfield. Linebackers have dropped. They've forgotten Mitchell. When he gets out in the open, man, he is tough to bring down. Nobody has scored a touchdown on Pittsburgh in the first quarter over the last 29 straight regular season games. Dallas did it in Super Bowl X. No one has scored a touchdown rushing against the Steelers in the last nine games in any time. Roosevelt leaks first man through. Lido Mitchell never left the spot at halfback. The tailback of the eye. And Mitchell gets down to the 16. Loretta leaks. And it'll be second down and six. The temperature, I think Brian Gumbel told you on Grandstand, was supposed to reach 55 to 60. And when it came on the air, it was Leakes' number, 48, and I don't think it's going much above that. I think it's about 84 in both those huddles. I wouldn't doubt you. Second down, Dowdy this time goes left and car right. Usually, it's the other way around. And Jones to throw, looking for Carr all the way. He's there. Touchdown! I'm telling you. Bert Jones flat on his back, gets up to see what happens. Once you get it inside that 25-yard line, you can pretty much be assured they're going to play some sort of a man defense. They didn't double, double cover car that time. As you mentioned, he's usually on the left side. They have a pattern set up. They would like to run on J.T. Thomas. Bert Jones lets the ball go at just the right time. Carr makes a perfect break, gives himself enough room to the outside, six points. And aside from Dallas in Super Bowl 10, this is the only team in 30 games to score on the Steelers in the first quarter. And the Colts are back in the hunt, showing that after all, down to the number one defense, their number one offense can produce points. And we've got a long way to go, and we've got a great afternoon and score. Tony Linhardt, who leads the National Football League in points scored, adds yet another. 1.17 to go just in the first quarter. The Pittsburgh Steelers defending the Super Bowl championship nine of the Baltimore Colts who hope to go all the way to the Super Bowl seven. And we'll be right back. Jim Simpson with John Brody, and there's the touchdown maker. 11 touchdowns during the regular season. 1,112 yards. The only Baltimore Colts to go over 1,000 yards aside from Raymond Berry. And he led the National Football League in yardage in pass catching. Ted Marchabrota in his second year. Coach of the year last year, in the playoffs last year, beaten by the Steelers last year. Back in the playoffs again this year against the same team. Tony Linhart to kick off. Ernest Pugh, who was shaken up on the opening kickoff, is back in to return the punt as a deep man. Or rather, the kickoff as a deep man. From ground level, watch Pugh back this one down. It's not going to be Pugh. It's going to be T. Bell, the rookie. And Bell has got some open space. Ricky Thompson and Tony Linhart after him, and it's going to be Thompson, the speedster, who knocks him out of bounds. Thompson, the rookie out of Baylor. And the Steelers will have excellent field position. You can see it looks a little congested from, from down low on the field. He sees it all bottled up in there. Cuts to the outside, gets a good block from Randy Grossman. Picks up a little help as Donnie Shell comes up to catch. And Tony Linhart didn't hurt this play. He forced... Actually, he forced Bell to take an angle that was very close to the sideline, eventually running him out. Ball is on a 32-yard line. Flyer has not returned. It's Franco Harris and Frenchie Fuqua. Franco Harris, he does get straight ahead this time, and he is dangerous when he does that. Jackie Wallace drags him down at the 19-yard line. No going up to the side this time. He simply went off tackle. Excellent block at the point of attack. You can see they're sacrificing quite a bit to shut down the run. Once you get into the secondary, there's not many people left. Once he broke, there were only four guys back there. All the linemen had committed themselves. Jackie Wallace jumped on his back and rode it down. 35 seconds to go, first quarter. 9-7, Pittsburgh. First down, Pittsburgh at the 19. Harris again trying to go straight ahead. That gets inside the 15-yard line. A pickup of five yards, maybe six, before Fred Cook makes the stop with Bruce Lair. Good offensive line surge on the last two plays. They really need it because they're outmanned up front. Uh, when I say that, I mean in numbers. They've only got seven. The other team's got eight, and they're filling those holes almost on every play. They've decided, hey, if they're going to beat us, they're going to have to throw the ball. 
right now they've chosen to run it pretty effectively. Frank Lewis comes back in. He and Starworth bring in the play. Swan is the constant. Well, we're in Baltimore, and we've got quite a divisional playoff game. Steelers 9, Baltimore 7 at the end of the first quarter. Preceding announcement was furnished as a public service by the National Football League. I'm sure you know who they are, the coaches of the teams in question. It's kind of ironic, too, that Ted Marchabrota was quarterback, has got the best offense, and Chuck Knoll was linebacker, has got good fair defense. Second down, five, 14-yard line, Steelers. Frank O'Hare straight ahead, rumbling inside the 10-yard line, and has a first down down to the 6-yard line. With Jim Chayemsky holding on along with Fred Cook. You can see once you get down here, there aren't too many secrets unless you have a trick play of some kind. Got great offensive line surge. Franco Harris didn't meet anybody until he'd already picked up four or five yards and carried him for four more. I may be wrong, but it appeared to me that Harris was trying to go outside early on in the ball game, and now they've simply set him off tackle or up the middle. They've got too many people on the line of scrimmage to run wide, Jim, uh, effectively, and they've just decided to take them on. Then a Cunningham comes in. Frank Lewis is out. We've got two tight ends. Cunningham's number is 89. First down goal to go. There goes Frenchy Pukwa. Down to about the three-yard line. Jackie Wallace is up top, number 20. And it'll be second down and goal to go in this 9-7 to seven ball game. Both clubs very confident. Ted Marcher Broda said that the home field will be quite an advantage for Baltimore. Ted Marcher Broda said that he never had a better week of championship practice as a coach in his life. And, of course, you know how the, feelers, uh, the Steelers feel after winning nine in a row and the last two Super Bowls in a row. Now there are three tight ends in there as Brown joins, is joined by Grossman and Cunningham, and that's Frank O'Harris. Frank O'Harris did not get the touchdown, they say. It'll be third down and inches to go. And I mean inches, and you can see it as they <laughs> unpile. Maybe, maybe one. Chuck Knoll along the sidelines usually sends in a wide receiver. But now we see Franco Harris coming out and Reggie Harris. Average about four and a half yards per pop. He's very effective. Number 46 comes in. He is very strong. Third down, Reggie Harrison touchdown. And a big hole for him to ramble through. The cornerback Mumford had to try to close it down. And you can see, you can see just how important. Uh, your special teams are. Uh, it's very simple. Bell set this touchdown up with a great return of a kickoff. Just changed the momentum flow, the whole deal. Put him on the 30-yard line, and from there, they never had to throw the ball to score it. Reggie Her uh, Harrison going in from the one. Roy Jarella, he missed a point after, but he converted a 45-yard field goal. This time, Jarella is good. And it's 16 to 7. Pittsburgh over Baltimore with 13 minutes and three seconds to go. We are still in the first half. Chief Fuqua getting a little bandages on his legs as little Howard Stevens stands at the five yard line, anticipating a rather short kick from Roy Jarella. And gets a number. This time, Ron Lee, who can run, he's a running back, picks it up. He had a great kickoff return a week ago, and now wedges it out near midfield, and the Baltimore Colts have excellent field position. Very important, Jim. Uh, you know, when, it, when, when your, your extra point kicker and your field goal kicker can't get the ball down there past the 10-yard line, you set up excellent field position anytime you score, and you don't want to do that too often with Baltimore. Uh, next Sunday, NBC will be out in Oakland. Who else is going to be out there? We only know the Oakland Raiders. It'll either be Baltimore or Pittsburgh. Whoever wins today, the AFC Championship game, but grandstand starting things off at 3.30 Eastern time. Lydell Mitchell looking for running room and picks up a few yards, getting some on his own. Holding on to him with Mean Joe Green and Dwight White. That's when Lydell runs best, when he gets people strung out a little bit to where he can pick and choose. Uh, he can almost create holes when they give him just a little bit. Mitchell has caught a pass for a first down today, and now he has gotten his best burst of the day. Six yards at second down four with the ball at the 47 yard line of Pittsburgh. Jones, and that is Lydell Mitchell, and Jack Ham is the first to meet him. 
However, for the first time today, it'll be third down and very short yardage. A couple of yards or less. They did have a third and three situation, but this is the best third down situation that Baltimore has been in thus far. They bring in their second tight end, Jimmy Kennedy, and take out Roger Carr. <laughs> Look at that. That's the front four. You can read them, can't you? Dwight White, Ernie Holmes, Bean Joe Green, L.C. Greenwood. McCauley is in there. He is a short yardage specialist, meaning as a running back. <laughs> And he's going to get the football, and he's not, well, I don't know. I don't think he got it. And now you wonder whether or not Ted March or Broad and Company gamble at this stage of the game, this early. Carr has already come back on the field. And I don't know whether he knows something I don't, because here comes a kicking team out. Yeah, Jim, I think a little later in the game, if the score were the same, you'd see him go for it. But right now, you've got almost three quarters of play left. Uh, you wouldn't like to have something. If you don't make it, you're in an awful vulnerable position. Baltimore sends out its outstanding punter in David Lee. Average less than 40 yards, but in net, and that is the length of your punt as opposed to the length of punt return. The net average is the best in the AFC. T. Bell is a punt returner. He will try to keep the ball away from him and get it toward the sidelines. He's angles it toward the sidelines. Might be a good kick. It will go out of bounds inside the 10-yard line. They'll mark it at the 9. It'll be first and 10 from there. And there's a little battle on the sideline. Randy Hall along the near sideline, and I believe Marv Kellum or Jack Lambert it is. So Lambert and company get into it already. It's not the Super Bowl yet, Jack. That's where you do that. Well, Super Bowl XI is coming up Sunday, January the 9th. Top team, I think you know all of this by now, the National Football Conference and the American Football Conference. Nobody knows who's going to be there. We will be at the Rose Bowl in Pasadena. Everything starting at 2.30 Eastern time. And another week of play yet to decide which teams are going to be there. Two more teams will be eliminated today. Frank O'Hare's going wide, flags are down, and Stan White strings it out beautifully and gets it at the 10-yard line. Kajanski put him down, but White in the corner of your screen there, 53, made the play happen, but there's a flag down. Hey, hey, you hold that stick and don't A legal motion charge, which would take them back to the four-yard line. Question is, do they want the yardage way down there, or would they want the down? They're going to take the yardage, which would take it back to the four-yard line and really put Terry Bradshaw and company in a hole. I think they like him on the 10, Jim, with second down. You're right. Bradshaw's big strike of the ball game has been 76 yards on third and eight for a touchdown to Frank Lewis. It is second down and nine. Bradshaw's going to throw as time loops it for Lewis. Back there is Oldham Lewis. He's out of bounds at midfield. A good play by Oldham that time. He was not going let, to let Lewis get behind him. He was in his zone. He had to be eight yards off him when he was at his farthest point. Here comes Terry all the way. He's going to Lewis. Gets enough protection. Lewis knows he can't get behind him. He throws it up there and hopes something good happens. Oldham comes back and makes a pretty good play to get Frank rid of the ball. Ray Oldham playing that cornerback spot because Nelson Muncy, their premier cornerback, was injured several games ago. And Oldham has taken over. When people downgrade the Baltimore Colts, and there's not much to downgrade them about, they pick on the defensive secondary. The secondary says that's not so. We can play with it. Now we'll see. It's third down and nine. Bradshaw back to throw. They're not blitzing Lynn Swan. Down he goes, short of the first down. Now he puts it ahead of the line of scrimmage on the 20 yard line. And the official is going to put it down at the 20, and it's a first down. That's what made it. That, that extra little lunge he made it by about a foot. Let's take a look at Lloyd Mumford. Now Lynn Swan is excellent, getting away from a, from a force man. He comes up, lets the flow clear out, gets underneath, underneath the linebackers. Then makes a last second lunge for first. 
First down at the 20-yard line. Lewis to the left. Long to the right. Rocky Blyer still out. Frenchy Fuqua filling in. Franco Harris at the line of scrimmage. Picks up perhaps a yard. Fred Cook, Stan White. You could get hurt just getting up out of those piles. <laughs> Second down to nine. Our score, 16 to seven, Pittsburgh. Our time, 9.45 to go, second quarter. That field will repeat, technically is grass. The players, the Baltimore Colt players, call it artificial dirt. Michael Harris trying to get outside. He's been swung out, and this time he gets out to the 25, perhaps the 26-yard line, where it'll be third down and four to go. And Jim Chayunsky, who has made a few tackles today, is in on that one along with John Dutton. Third down and nearly five yards to go. Frank Lewis trots in and will hand the offensive play to Terry Bradshaw as Chayumski is called a defensive signals for the Colts. Lewis left, Swan right. They've not gotten to Bradshaw yet. Trying to this time, Franco Harris, shy of the first down, but he's going to get it. Near the 30-yard line, the nose of the ball was on the 20, so if he gets the ball through the 30, he does. He's got a first down. Stan White made the tackle. Remember, this drive started on the nine-yard line. That's heads-up football, Jim. Franco knew exactly how far he had to go to get that first down. You can see he didn't he didn't fool around trying to get rid of the blocker. He just overwhelmed it. Well, the Steelers are doing something here that, if you know any laws at all about football, is very effective. Not only are they moving with the football, not only do they have more points than Baltimore, but they're not allowing Burt Jones and company to have the football. Pretty important. <laughs> That's Chayefsky who finally got him, but Laird made a great force on the play as Fuqua goes down. And from Baltimore, let's pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC television network. You can see it's pretty crowded up there at the line of scrimmage. Now, Jim Chayefsky has had an excellent year. Jerry Mullins is out on him, gets pretty good position on him. Actually gets enough enough of a block to make this play go if Frenchie broken clean. Second down and eight to go. Balls at the 33. Bradshaw throwing a great willingness to throw today, and he throws, and it's complete. That's Lynn Swan at the 47-yard line. And now they move from the 9 to the 47. Let's take a look at Lynn Swan again. Now, they're putting a lot of heat on him. They've got Darrell Luce coming out to try and get in the passing lane. However, he isn't able to get there in time. Terry puts it right on the money, and Swan goes to the only place he could have thrown it. Bradshaw has already thrown eight times today. He is six for eight, already 121 yards, 76 of those on one play. That was the touchdown play to Lewis. Michael Harris, they love to get him straight ahead, and he is murder when he does. There he goes. Olin's going to have to try to slow down the express if he can. And he does inside the five-yard line. Franco Harris rips one off from the 47 down inside the five. Jim, this is the third time we've seen him break clean at the line of scrimmage. And every time he does, it's going to be a long gainer because they've got a lot of people at that line of scrimmage. They're sacrificing a strong safety. He's up there. Franco breaks clean. And the only guy that can catch him is all the way from the other side. Ray Oldham slows him up and then finally pulls him down. Take a look again, another look. Great blocks at the point of attack. Once you get him clean through the line, he's pretty tough. Three tight ends again. Reggie Harrison has scored a touchdown moments ago. Back in again to team with Frenchie Fuqua. That's Reggie Harrison with the football, and he battles down to the two-yard line. 16 to 7 our score, 550 to go in the first half. And the Steelers threatening to go up by 23 to 7 if they can. And you look back and wonder, when was the last time anyone scored as many as 23 points against the Pittsburgh Steelers? Answer, third game of the season. No one's gotten more than 18 points against the Steelers since. 
Don Starworth has come back in. Randy Grossman goes out. Cunningham and Brown remain the two tight ends. Second down. Harrison again. Blocks. Gets down to the one. Looks like the ball is loose. Ball belongs to Baltimore. The Colts. Reggie Harrison fumbles. I believe that's Stan White, 53 down the bottom, and he's the one that gets up with it. You notice what, look, Ray Oldham in your picture made a, made a big play, saving a touchdown, certain for Frank Franco Harris. Had he not been in great pursuit coming from all the way across the field, they'd have had seven points. That was a seven-point play. 5-14 to go, first half, Baltimore deep in its own territory and dreading the Pittsburgh Steelers, 16-7. to Joe Jones calling signals is... Team has the football on their own two. Maxie Barr, defensive coordinator of the Colts, just had every one of the 11 defensive men on the bench talking to them about something. Next time, Pittsburgh gets the ball. Lido Mitchell, first shot, gets out across the 10 yard line, near a first down. It'll be second down in the yard to go. Jack Lambert makes the tackle along with Andy Russell. In any event, they failed, and here comes Baltimore. Lido Mitchell again, spinning across the 10 yard line. Star to the left, Dowdy to the right. Mitchell and Leakes the setback. Well, you're right. He's going to throw. And he's looking for Dowdy and overthrows him at the 43 yard line. Dowdy enjoying double coverage from Thomas and Wagner. Second down and 10 to go. Mitchell hit. They couldn't clear the block for him. Pratt could not move his man. Mitchell cut back and Joe Green put him down. He's run a total of 14 yards all year. Five defensive backs in there. Donnie Shell is the fifth one for the Steelers. Third down and did he take too much time? That's exactly what he did. It'll be third down and 15. Jones under pressure, terrible pressure, and down he goes. And that up top is White White, who was really rolling Jones around. Green was the man to put the pressure on. He may have been rolling him around, but he's rolling around the guy that can take it. You'll notice as Dwight White tried to intimidate him after after he was pulled down by Joe Green. Watch, I don't know if we have it, but he came in a little late. Now he's being a little tough, and uh, Jones doesn't even pay any attention to him. David Lee almost out of his end zone. Looking for a big boomer, but kick if he can get one away here. It's a wobbly high kick. Lynn Swan, the returner at the 45-yard line, he is a great returner, as you know, and a flag goes down. Two flags go down. As the tackle is made by Ed Simonini, a reserve linebacker inside the 40 yard line. Thus far, with one exceptional drive of 69 yards, clipping is going to be called against the Steelers. By the Colts, this ball game has belonged to the Steelers. Two minutes, 38 seconds to go in the first half. It's 16 to 7, Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh scored the first time it had the football, then moved out to nine to nothing before that 69 yard drive. Harrison carried over, culminated a long drive, set up, not a long drive, set up by the kick return by, of T. Bell. And then, of course, the Steelers missed yet another one when Harrison fumbled and Stan White recovered at the two yard line. Foul. Clipping, 85, offense. That would be Ernest Pugh called with clipping, number 85. Ball is on the 46-yard line. The Steeler defense has been everything they've talked about. The Steeler offense has been led by the passing of Terry Bradshaw. And, of course, Franco Harris ripped off one big run. Bradshaw throwing on first down. And he's going for Lynn Swan. Flag down off the fingertips of Wallace. Back down at the 28-yard line. And Lloyd Mumford was doing everything he could to hold Lynn Swan up. And the ball was put in the air while he was still making contact with Swan. And I'm sure that's what the penalty is. Jackie Wallace was playing center field, running back there to pick up any loose fly balls. But uh, that penalty looked pretty obvious. Well, they're all coming back up this way. Mike Webster saying we want what the penalty is.
And they're going to step it off from the line of scrimmage. So it is not pass interference, just a legal use of hands downfield. You think Ted's upset? Right. It's, it's pretty hard to find a way to, to handle Lance one. You have to stop him. And you have to stop him up. Now, they're giving Terry plenty of time to throw the ball. When you do that, these receivers are going to get open. You've got to invent a way to stop him. Personal foul is what they call it. It's at the 39-yard line, and that is a first down. Frenchy Fuqua gets down near the 35-yard line. 2.25 to go. Chayinsky made the stop. Well, I've never seen anybody hotter along the sidelines of the National Football League than what Chuck Fairbanks was yesterday in the last minute of the play in that game with Oakland. But Ted Marchabrot is warming up. <laughs> I don't think he and Burl Toller are in total agreement. Second down and seven to go. The ball at the 36-yard line, and we've come down to the two-minute mark. Well, March of is heated up. He's trying to heat up his coats, and the Steelers, they are hot themselves. It's 60 to 7 Pittsburgh over Baltimore with two minutes to go here in the first half in Baltimore. Second down and seven Pittsburgh at the 36 of Baltimore. Frenchy Fuqua. Fuqua gets inside the 30 yard line. Very close to first down, and Chayunsky again in on the tackle. Well, they're marking the ball now. He may have that first down. They're going to call, I believe, for a measurement. That's what they'll do. I think he does have the first down, Jim, and I know Frenchy Fuqua, who's been wanting to play, champing at the bit all season long and actually hasn't gotten as much playing time as he'd like, uh, is loving it. Well, I'll bet you Terry Bradshaw is loving it, too, because as we indicated on grandstand today, everybody, when they went to pick for the Pro Bowl, immediately went to Burt Jones of the Baltimore Colts for the obvious good job he's done all year long. Bradshaw has been put down on each of the previous two years, and yet he won a couple of Super Bowls, and now here he is looking excellent today. He is. He's the difference so far. He's had six out of eight for 135 yards, but he didn't have the year to get him into the, into the Super Bowl. He'd be the first guy to tell you. Or, excuse me, the Pro Bowl. Franco Harris, and that is Fred Cook. Second down and 10. <laughs> Second down and 10. 59 seconds to go in the half. Bradshaw with time looping. Oh, Swan's by himself. Mumford fell down. Touchdown. Lloyd Mumford fell down. Swan must have been 15 yards behind him. In the clear. And the Colts are standing around hands on hips of defense and very discouraged and slowly walking off the field. They're, they're a little down right now, but you can see he fell down. He never, he was trying to bump Swan when he made, at the point where he made his break. He never could touch him because Swan made, ran his pattern so well. You can see here that Bumper's trying to get any piece he can, but let's give Terry Bradshaw a little credit. I've, I've had an awful lot of receivers get open, never did see them when they got open. He, he read the defense. He knew the one man he had to come to was Swan, and he hit him. You're really in to add the extra point. And a flag goes down before he gets the chance. Well, I believe it is obvious to everyone watching, the Steelers who do have the number one defense in the National Football League, if the Colts are to get into this game, they're going to have to have that number one offense of theirs get uncranked in the second half. Thus far, they haven't had the ball enough to get uncranked. One of their few possessions began on the two-yard line. A lot, of that, a lot of that is because Pittsburgh has held the ball. This will be a 25-yard point after touchdown as a result of a legal procedure. Gorilla puts it up, and it is good. 53 seconds to go in the first half. It's all Pittsburgh Steelers. Ted Marchabota reflects how he feels. Pittsburgh 23, Baltimore 7. And they have to get to him if they're going to be effective. And so far, they haven't come. It was 21 to 10 late going already at the halftime here with Pittsburgh not nearly the favorite team as it was a year ago. The slight favorite this year already leading 23-7. Now Mansfield, this may be trouble. And Ron Lee picks it up and runs out of bounds at the 35-yard line. 
And now Burt Jones and company. A lot of quarterbacks. John can tell us a lot about this. Have their two-minute system. He, I wonder if he's got a 52-second program here. And on a quick count. Jones fires. He's got Dowdy, but it's intercepted by Glenn Edwards. Edwards down to the 40-yard line and out of bounds at about the 35. And Jones is intercepted for the second time this afternoon. Mumford, who fell down last time, is out on Swan, playing off him a little bit. Flag down. That's Swan. Missed by Luce, still on his feet. Remember, a flag is down. Jackie Wallace misses him. He goes out of bounds. Terry rolled to his right. Somebody held. Back, Starworth is to the left. Three wide receivers against five defensive backs. From lots of time thus far for Bradshaw. That's going to run, and for the first time, they get it. And the crowd here knows it. Them three wide receivers with Lewis and Swan both to the right. Bradshaw hands to Franco Harris. Harris still on his feet. He gets away. That's Daryl Luce after him. And he's knocked down. But inbounds with 18 seconds to go. And now they stop the clock with 17 seconds to go. This first half has been Steelersville. They have really been awesome. Bradshaw, they've gotten to him once. Now flings it out to Harris. Harris does not try to get out of bounds. He stays inbounds, and down he goes. With seven seconds to go, and they stop the clock again. Five yards. With seven seconds to go, and they stop the clock again. 25 yards out. Jarella's kick is up, but good. 25-yard field goal, Roy Jarella. And the Steelers do get on the board again. And have them. Lead of 26 to 7 with four seconds to go. This is awesome. And uh, if Baltimore is going to get back in the game, they have an opportunity in the first control of the ball to run it in for six. They'll get back into it. If they don't, I think it's going to be an awfully long afternoon. Jarella will kick it off, although he did not handle the last two kickoffs of the first half. Howard Stevens, the return man, has come out to the eight-yard line. Freddie Scott, Bruce Laird have moved up to about the 15-yard line. 26 to 7, the Steelers, Terry Bradshaw has thrown a couple of touchdown passes. This will be Stevens at the 11. 20. Trying to get around Randy Grossman, he does, but everybody's over here, and he's in trouble, and down he goes. But a good return out to the 39-yard line, where Burt Jones, Lydell Mitchell, Roosevelt Leakes come out for the backfield. Roger Carr, Glenn Dowdy, the wide receivers, Raymond Chester, the tight end, Taylor and Coons, the tackles, Pratt and Collette, the guards, and Mendenhall at center. The Steelers will have Greenwood, Green, Holmes, and White as their front four. Ham, Lambert, and Russell, their linebackers. Thomas and Blunt on the corners. Wagner and Edwards to safety. Lydell Mitchell trying to get something started and picks up perhaps two yards to the 40 where Jack Ham, number 59, makes the stop. And again for Burt Jones and company, it is second down and long. Second down and eight. The Here is a team, the Baltimore Colts, that have averaged nearly 30 points a ball game. They have seven thus far. Going against a team that has allowed 28 points over the last nine games. Probably why they've got seven. Car <laughs> to the left, Dowdy to the right. Jones really has to get a drive engineered now. He's got Mitchell right there and throws hard to Mitchell's right. Missed him. They let they let Mitchell go, and I'm sure their thinking is, hey, let Mitchell catch 10, 12, 14 balls. He's not the guy that's going to beat us. The guy that's been winning ball games for them is Roger Carr and, and Burt Jones and Glenn Dowdy. They're wide receivers. They've du they doubled him that time as they have in the past, and he's, he, he kind of forces him to go to his tight end, and he's back. And that's not really what he wants to do. Jack, Jack Lambert goes out. Jim Allen comes in as a fifth back, and Don McCauley's come in as the other setback for the Colts. They're down eight. Looping it out here for McCauley, and he cannot get it by his man. It was Jack Ham, and the ball was thrown. I don't believe that Ham been there. McCauley would have caught up to it. And the Colts are shut down very quickly. And what you try to do, Jim, is get your running back on one of their linebackers. However, when it happens to be Jack Ham, it's no bargain. He had the play design, had the defense he liked, but McCauley couldn't beat him. David Lee standing on his own 25. Lynn Swan is not too deep, standing on the 30. 
Al Swan begins to back. Lee can boom him, but normally he hangs them high. Gets it away. Swan, no fair catch, 23-yard line. And a lot of folks are down there, and he'll be run out of bounds. Run out of bounds by number 55, who is Dan Dickel, third-year linebacker. And now Terry Bradshaw and company come out. Terry Bradshaw comes out along with Frenchie Fuqua, 33. Blyer will not play this half, but he may be available if indeed the Steelers go into Oakland next week. Frank O'Hare's the other running back. Frank Lewis and John Starworth alternate one wide receiver, bringing in the plays. Lynn Swan is the other. Larry Brown, the tight end. Cove and Mullins of tackles. Davis and Clack, the guards. And Webster at center. Franco Harris. Big hunk of yardage out across the 35. Cook, Barnes, Irwin, who made the tackle, and Dutton, the front four. Loose, Chionsky, and White, the linebackers. Mumford and Salter. Let's check that now. Mumford, Oldham, Laird, and Salter becomes your weak safety. Jackie Wallace, who was burned a couple times in the first half, is not playing. Salter started the year with the Redskins, went on to Miami, then to Seattle. Now playing the weak side safety for Baltimore. Second down and four to go. Quick pitch to Harris to get him outside, and he's going to get outside and get the first down. At the 42 or three yard line, Franco Harris adds to that yardage. Now it's 128. Let's take a look. I mentioned earlier they have sacrificed a lot to try and shut down Franco Harris and have been successful doing it. That's pretty much why. This guy has balance that's almost unparalleled. He kind of finds holes where there aren't any. That time he picked up seven of the finest. Well, the team that's leading is Pittsburgh, 26 to 7, and they picked up the first down. The team that's trailing failed to pick up the first down, getting the kickoff to open the second half. Archie Fuqua across the 45. The ball will be placed down on the 47-yard line where Jim Chayunsky, number 59, made the tackle. Second down at about 7 to go. 12-20 to go, third quarter. That is what Franco Harris has done thus far. He got 153 against them last year. Pittsburgh has had one turnover today. In their first five games, of which they lost four, they had 19 turnovers. In the last nine games before this game, they had 12. Bradshaw, time, does he have time? And threads it right in the middle, first down. That's John Stallworth with Lloyd Mumford making the hit. You know, I don't think you could see uh, any better from up here than Terry seems to be finding his receivers from down on the playing field. Every time you see an open receiver, he threads the needle and puts it right on the spot. Nine of, the, of 11 in too shabby. One of the old cliches, John, is when you're hot, you're hot, and when you're not, you're not. And thus far, it's holding through for Terry Bradshaw. He is hot, and the Colts are not. 26 to 7, the Steelers, and they are on the move at the Baltimore 45 with the first down. Bradshaw showing the willingness to put it in the air, and why not? He's going for Lewis. Back there is Oldham. It's Lewis who plays the ball. Oldham was playing the man, and Oldham said, I was pushed. But back there with him was Grover Clemmer, the back judge, and said, oh, no, you weren't either. <laughs> well, Frank was trying to time his cut. He saw the ball. Oldham didn't see the ball. And Oldham feels that he pushed off him just a little bit to get underneath. Now, uh, had, he made the, had he made the cut at the proper time, he might have been able to make the play. I don't think Ray's going to win that battle. It's going to be second down and 10 from the 45-yard line. Flag is down, and the Steelers are moving backwards. And while we were watching that downfield, I think we're going to have a legal use of hands. Here is Pat Haggerty. Did he say number 50? That would be Jim Clack again. That's the second time the Clack has been called with holding today. Takes the ball back to the 45 of Pittsburgh. First down and 20. Swan goes right, Starworth to the left. Bradshaw, first down, loops it out to Franco, has two men to greet him. Picks up a couple of yards to the 48-yard line. Bruce Laird and Darrell Luce were right there. 
Loose, 58 in your picture, called on to fill in for McLeod, a fine left side linebacker or strong side linebacker who was hurt in the preseason. Oldham came up with Nelson Muncie, the regular right cornerback, and went down to injury later on in the season. Three wide receivers in again on second down and 16. They instead give the ball to Harris, and Harris is going to be corralled, and down he goes by Dutton. Dutton was not the first man to hit him, but Dutton's the man that put him down, number 78. And Harris is down, a little slow in getting up. Not a bad, not a bad call. Every time they've had a chance, they've run a draw effectively. This time he wants to get in position to make one third down play, not quite as not, for not quite as many yards, maybe seven or eight. Now he's got a third and twenty. Lyer is out with a sprained toe. Harris is down, taking it easy for the moment. I recall one game that we did in Pittsburgh where Harris could not play. Reggie Harrison came in and had a whale of a day. So let's see if Franco can play. We'll come back. 10-22 to go, third quarter. Steelers on top of the Colts, 26 to 7. Harris still shaken, nevertheless walked off the field with a couple of helpful arms about him, 132 yards thus far. Reggie Harrison comes in, so that is the second string backfield. Blyer's already out. Third down, 19 to go. And Bradshaw loves to go up top. Comes out, throws past Duke. Incomplete fourth down, and Baltimore with 10 02 to go. Third quarter will get the ball back and try to get something else started. If you wonder why the cheer, that is about the first time, and that is the first time that they have forced Pittsburgh into a punting situation. Howard Stevens, a lone punt returner, back at the 11. Bobby Walden in to do the kicking, averaging a little bit better than 39 yards further. Blocked is on, but they miss it. Stevens will take it at the 20. 30 and runs right into Mike Webster, who gets it down at the 32 yard line. Webster makes the stop. Coming up on New Year's Day, Southern California against Michigan in the Rose Bowl. Following that, John Brody and I will be down in the Orange Bowl. And you will see Ohio State and Colorado. And on the 8th of January, NBC moves on to the Senior Bowl in Mobile. Eleven members of this Pittsburgh team, nine of the Colts played in that Senior Bowl, including both quarterbacks. That's the all-star game that everybody watches. Mark Jones has thrown first down. Across the middle, Raymond Custer, first down, 44-yard line. Knocked down by Glenn Edwards. It's funny how old Mo is catching. You can see the fans pick up when Baltimore held, held Pittsburgh in the last series of downs. Burt Jones is not going to wait to take advantage of it. He drops back and fires the ball right in between the deep zone to Raymond Chester. They're still doubling the outsides. Going to make it very tough on him to hit the outside receivers, but he can't hit his backs and Raymond. Steelers very slow getting downfield, so Pat Haggerty stopped the clock until they did, and now restarts it with 9.25 to go in the third quarter. Car to the left, Dowdy to the right. 26 to 7, Pittsburgh. Lydell Mitchell looking for running room, bursts out of the pack and gets across the 40 and down near the 36 yard line. And for one of the few times today, perhaps the third, it'll be second down and short yardage for Baltimore. That's right, and what, what happens is good offensive surge. You see these guys get in a the huddle, they pump it up a little bit, and everything starts to move. Franco Harris has bruised ribs, probably will be back. You can see him with the jacket on, walking in the back of your picture. Black goes down. Roosevelt makes one of the few times he's got the football. He wanted the football, and that is a big mistake. On second down and short yard, it's second and about three. It's now second down and eight. I think White White's hurt too, Jim. White a little slow in getting up. Speaking of penalties, in that game yesterday on roughing the passer, and Chuck Gerbach said, I thought Hamilton of New England tipped the ball. Does that make a difference when he got to Kenny Stabler? No, it's not like a punter. It's, uh, you know, when you when you rough the passer, you rough the passer, whether you tipped it or not, it doesn't make any difference. 
Going all the postgame quotes of Julius Adams and Ray Hamilton went for naught because whether they tipped the ball or not, the quarterback is not fair game. They just feel like it. <laughs> Second down and eight. And call is replaced leaks after that. Little swing pass to Mitchell. He cannot step around the linebacker on that side. Whereas Lambert coming over from the middle. And it'll be third down. Let's pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC television network. This is Channel 11, WIIC TV, Pittsburgh. If you notice Lambert coming up to make the play on Lydell Mitchell that time, normally it's Andy Russell's spot. However, that time they didn't double the outside receivers with the quarterbacks. They did it with a linebacker. Five defensive backs. Donnie Shell is the fifth one on third down and six to go. Jones looking for Dowdy. Now has to get away and cannot get away. Jones is pushed all the way back to the 46-yard line. And they'll have to kick the ball away to the Pittsburgh Steelers. Picked up one first down on the pass to Raymond Chester at second down and three, only to have a man go in motion. They faked several blitzes today. This time, penalty coming up, John, against the Steelers. Well, what I was going to say doesn't apply. <laughs> if that holding is correct, defensive holding, that's an automatic first down. But let's see what the penalty is. Pat Haggerty will step it off, but he's coming way downfield. And will start at the 41. First down at the 36-yard line. 7.41 to go, third quarter. Dowdy comes to the right. He was well covered by J.T. Thomas last time. Car to the left. Blunt has shut him down with one big exception today when he broke loose for a touchdown. Over the middle to Lydell Mitchell, running around Jack Hamm. He lost the football. Steelers Andy Russell gets it. Andy Russell picked up the fumble and went 93 yards a year ago for a touchdown. This time he has another fumble recovery that blunts the Baltimore drive. The, the kind of break that uh, Baltimore just cannot afford. You see, it's another play action pass. Again, they go out, they double the wide guys, jump on Chester. They're leaving Lydell Mitchell open. He's been open most of the day. The point production's kind of low. There's another flag, and the Baltimore offense comes back on, and we'll wait for the explanation. The Steelers had gone off and saw Baltimore's defensive unit come on. Now it's at the 30 or the 29 yard line, and I guess they simply blew it dead. And that's the kind of break they can use. They simply blew the ball dead, but they, one of the officials had signaled Pittsburgh ball, and I'm sure you saw it. Second down and three to go. Baltimore's been kept alive. And Mitchell is not going to get the first down. And now they've got two downs in which to make the first down. Green and Holmes on top of them there, along with White White. Third down and two to go. But I think, as you know, they'll take a couple of cracks to try to get the first down. Jimmy Kennedy comes in as another tight end. Roger Carr walks out. Don McCauley comes in. Lido Mitchell comes out. Six forty-two to go, third quarter, Pittsburgh 26, Baltimore 7. The lone wide receivers, Dowdy heels to the right. Roosevelt leaks, has the first down and more. Former Texas back gets inside the 25. First down, Baltimore. Lambert and Wagner make the tackle. They have got to get the attention of Pittsburgh linebackers on their two running backs when they run the ball. And the only way you can do that is pick up eight or nine yards a shot. This was an outstanding run. It's the first time Roosevelt Leaks has really broken loose for any measurable gain at all. And Ken Mendenhall did a tremendous job on middle linebacker Jack Lambert. First down from the 22. Jones looking for Carr. Overthrows him in the end zone. He took an inside cut and then went out. And Jones threw before the break and overthrew it. 
Jimmy overthrew him, I think, primarily because Mel Blunt played it so well. He got so deep in his coverage after he'd lost Carr that when he finally made his break, it forced Jones to throw the ball higher than he would have liked. Second down and 10. And Donnie Shell comes in, and on second down 10, second and 10 on the 22. Out goes Ernie Holmes. So there are three men up front, three linebackers, and five defensive backs for the Steelers. Jones, the blitz is on from Ham. Jones stepped up to get around Ham, but Andy Russell coming from the other side made the stop. The they have blitzed seldom, as we mentioned earlier. However, in this drive, they blitzed twice in passing situations at just the right time. Burt Jones has no chance as no one picked up Jack Ham. He wanted to go out to the right, had no chance, and got, held, got handled. Third down and 20. Well, the Steelers are not known as a blitzing team, but when they got off to a poor start this year and unable to get the opposing quarterback, they began to blitz. There's Jack Ham. In their first five games, of which they lost four this year, the Steelers had a total of six sacks. In the last nine games, they had 35 sacks. Third down. Jones is going to be caught from behind by the blitzing linebacker Russell. This time they blitz the middle linebacker and the outside linebacker. On the last play, the two outside linebackers came, Ham and Russell. This time Lambert and Russell came. Jim, they've mixed it up so intelligently that it's they're really just taking what uh, what Baltimore allows them to take linebacker wise. If they see nobody ready to pick them up, somebody's coming. I don't know how you operate under those conditions. Andy Russell has been an outstanding player here today. Forrest Blue has come in to punt, or rather to center for the punt. David Lee steps back. Baltimore used a lot of the clock, but didn't get a point. They had a first down at the 22. The line of scrimmage now is the 41. Five minutes to go, third quarter. T. Bell is back, angling toward the sidelines. Flag goes down as David Lee was knocked off his feet at midfield. And Baltimore again will have the football. Look like Larry Brown hit him. And they're getting every break in the world to keep the ball. They've just got to move it. You can't say they haven't had their chances in this half. This is the third trip without changing, turning over the ball. You can see Larry Brown goes in, tries to get out of the way, but he's just a little too close. Now, uh, as opposed to yesterday and roughing the passer in the punting, even you must tip the ball before you can hit the man in punting. Pat Agony saying there was Larry Brown. Line of scrimmage is now the 35-yard line. The Steeler defense has been absolutely sensational this afternoon, barring one 16-yard pass to Roger Carr. They cap the 69-yard mark. Jones, looking downfield, now will run. And down he goes, picking up maybe yard. Ernie Holmes made the stop. Well, Mel Blunt said earlier in the week that Roger Carr is just another average receiver, a man trying to beat me. Blunt shut him out last week. But I've been watching Blunt on Carr today, and he's done an outstanding job today. Yeah, he may have said that, but he didn't think that, Jim, or they wouldn't be putting two people on Roger Carr all day long. If he has a little help, two against one's a little easier. That time, Burr was trying to go to his wide, wide receivers. There are patterns you can run when you're being double covered. But there aren't a whole lot of them, and you do need time to throw, and that's what he needs most. Donnie Shell comes in as a back. Ernie Holmes, one of the front four, goes out. Second down, 10. Steelers may have moved. Carr still got the ball. Flag goes down. Pass out to Leakes, no good. That could have been the Steelers offside. At least they're the ones I saw move first. Flag on the play. Nope. They moved because a back or a lineman was in motion. It'll be third down and 10 or second down 15, depending on what Andy Russell and Jack Ham decide. Dwight White, who limped off, has been replaced by John Banizak, his defensive right end. Third down. 
third down and ten. Don Batazak is happy to be here. Get away from that week of washing dishes. His wife had a baby girl last Monday, and John has been minding the household without it. Bet that baby likes what the, she's seeing today. <laughs> Don McCauley's in the backfield along with Lydell Mitchell. Raymond Chester, the tight end, has split five yards to the right on third down ten. Jones looking for some time. Fakes. This is Mean Joe Green after him. Oops, there's Jack Ham as he gets across the 35 yard line. And it'll be fourth down. Mean Joe Green showed me some speed over a short space. He's got some. He's kind of kind of kidding with Burt there, but what Burt needed was a little more time again. Uh, he had enough time to throw the ball in one of his shorter patterns, shorter routes, but he didn't have enough time to wait for either of his wide receivers to get over. Green goes out and Ernie Holmes comes in. Nope, Green's gonna. That's right, Green's going out, and Donnie Shelley went out, will come back in. Baltimore's going for the first down on fourth down, and eight to go. The ball on their own 32-yard line, and they're down 26-7, to seven, with just about four minutes left in the third quarter. Roger Carr operating out of the backfield this time. They're going to put it down to Carr, who's got the speed but will not get to it. That time they brought Carr into the backfield. They gave him a different coverage. He spread it out, but he still could, was far near triple T. We had a chance to see uh, Lydell Mitchell. He was standing in the middle of the field. I'm sure Burt Jones had already decided to go deep on the play. But there was something in the middle. Three minutes, 44 seconds to go in the third quarter. Pittsburgh holds. Pittsburgh holds the lead. 26 to 7 over Baltimore. As I mentioned earlier, uh, Lydell Mitchell was standing in the middle of the field pretty well open, and it was because Jack... Jack Lambert was trying to call timeout before the play got started and really didn't have a defense. Well, he saw Roger Carr in the backfield and he wanted to say hey and then calling timeout he never covered Mitchell. But the Steelers have the football in his Bradshaw right out throwing again this time to Harrison. Harrison's got the first down and more out near midfield. Well the Steelers thus far today have been awesome on defense as expected. And have shown us they can run with the football or throw the football on offense. And some people didn't expect the throwing part of their offense. Well, they're throwing the ball very well, too. I mean, they're throwing patterns that they haven't been throwing all year. They don't throw a lot of little curls. Rocky Flyer will catch a few. But Terry Bradshaw is primarily a pattern thrower. Today, he's mixed it up and done it all. Flyer's got a sprained toe. Franco Harrison has bruised ribs. So it's Frenchy Fuqua and Reggie Harrison the backs. There's Reggie Harrison. Harrison picks up five, six, seven yards. Down across the 45-yard line. Cincinnati got 27 points against Baltimore. Dallas got 30. And nobody else has come close. Steelers already have 26, had that at the half. And the most the Steelers have ever given up is 30, and that's in their third game of the season. Second down, short yardage, Harrison. Very close to the first down, and they have it at the 40-yard line of Baltimore. Chayunsky drives him back. It is a first down for the Pittsburgh Steelers. That marcher Boda looking over that game plan, wondering what is there in there that he can call on, change. One kind of gets the feeling, Jim, that uh, the defense is affected by the fact the offense had the ball inside the 40-yard line three different times without turning it over and still came out with no points. Uh, could be tough from here on in. Both Stallworth and Swan are wide to the right. Bradshaw, there was a blitz on, and there's a catch made by Lim Swan at the 27-yard line. And Swan took quite a wrap. First down. I'm sure Lynn will be all right, Jim. How many times have you seen him make catches like this? Last week, he took a very nip and tuck battle with Houston and turned it into a 21 to nothing game. Similar pattern. He got underneath, the ball was thrown, came right into the crowd. Toughest pattern a receiver has to catch. He caught it getting hit. There's a very large and vocal crowd of Steeler fans with their black and gold hats across the way. And this series of plays happening right in front of the Pittsburgh seat. So they're having a nifty time. From the 27, first down. Reggie Harrison puts his head down. And the backs now are beginning to simply move the people out. That's right over Chayemsky, but Harrison did not give up and got 
About four, the second two on his own. Second down and six, less than a minute to go in the third quarter. Baltimore last year was one and four, wound up ten and four. Pittsburgh this year was one and four, wound up ten and four. But March of Baltimore said there was a big difference. Pittsburgh were the defending champions and had the pressure, knew what they could do. Baltimore a year ago, it was kind of Cinderella time. Quick opener, Harrison gets down near the 20-yard line. And it'll be third down and maybe three to go. Joe Ehrman down the bottom along with Jim Chayomsky. 25 seconds to go. That could be the final play of this, the third quarter. The Steelers are in no hurry to use up the clock at all. 15 seconds to go. And the play clock has got about 19 seconds to go. Chayomsky today has had an outstanding day. 11 tackles, four assists. He's had to do most of it himself. Still five seconds to go. When you see a linebacker that's made 11 tackles and some assists somewhere up front, your defensive line is getting handled, and I believe that's the real key. Well, that's Pittsburgh bench. They're up on top. Are they looking at open? Right now, it looks like they are. The preceding was brought to you as a public service by the National Football League. I'm Jim Simpson with John Brody, and while we're away, we took a little vote among ourselves. Maybe the Steeler fans, maybe the Steeler players, the coaching staff will disagree. But as far as John Brody and I are concerned, we don't remember the present-day Steelers, meaning of the last three years, they won two Super Bowls, playing this well. They are absolutely devastating today, and they've done everything right on offense and defense, and Baltimore's had very little chance to do anything. Three wide receivers in, Swan, Lewis, and Stallworth. Third down, three to go at the 20 yard line. Harrison tries to get it, he's got it and more and gets down near the 10 yard line. Reggie Harrison, and he's mad because he didn't go all the way. <laughs> he ducked under three tacklers on his way down to the 10 yard line. Uh, he got about all there was to that play. You can see now, here comes Clack. He comes outside, gets on Stan White, does his job, kicks him out, creates a hole, Harrison goes right underneath the three on Tony Packers. 26 to 7, and the Steelers can see those round trip tickets to Oakland waiting for them next week right now. They can add another one right here. Ernest Pugh has come in as a wide receiver. He's wide to the left. Bradshaw lofts it for Lynn Swan. Has one hand on it, can't hold it out of bounds. Bradshaw simply got the ball away in a hurry, depended on Swan to run under it. Next Sunday, Either the Baltimore Colts, they would have an uphill battle to do it, or these Pittsburgh Steelers will be going against the winners of yesterday's ball game, which of course means the Raiders of Oakland. Kurt Gowdy and Don Meredith will be out there. But I think everybody knows the winner of that game. We're going to the Super Bowl, which will be seen here on the 9th of January on NBC. Second down and 10 from the 10 and a half yard line. Lewis is back in, along with Swan and Starwood. Hugh has gone out. Over the middle, touchdown, Lynn Swan, his second of the day. I tell you, that just about puts the icing on the cake, and there's still 13 or 14 minutes left to play. Swan gets underneath the defensive back. Terry Bradshaw, again, just threw it as perfectly as you can picture. They're in a blitzing situation. Shyansky's coming. They've got a safety blitz. Brian Saul is coming after Bradshaw. Plays a big hole in the middle. Swan beats Mumford at 6-4. Bradshaw only completed... 92 passes before today for about 48%. Today, Bradshaw is 13 of 17 for 233 yards and a couple of touchdowns. An outstanding day by the man who hasn't been mentioned lately in the same breath with Burt Jones of Baltimore. But that Steeler team overall is very effective. It is 33 to 7. The Pittsburgh Steelers lead the Baltimore, a team they were slightly favored to beat. Swan, who at times has said he's actively considering retiring from the game because of the tough shots he's taken. I don't think he's going to retire. <laughs> he just smiled at our cameras and put up the finger for number one. Well, his contract must be running out or something. He's enjoying this. Bobby Walden is going to try to kick off this time. Howard Stevens takes it at the 16-yard line. Roy Girella not handling the kickoffs today. Stevens trying to get outside. Pugh trips him up as he gets up to the 35-yard line. 
Well, a full weekend of college basketball. That's what you can look forward to during the next three months when NBC begins its second year of regular season coverage. Starting Sunday, January the 2nd, you'll see regional telecasts on Saturday, national telecasts on Sunday, and it all begins on the 2nd of January with a national doubleheader. Michigan, picked by many, is number one at South Carolina, followed by Houston at UCLA. Grandstand gets our coverage on the 2nd, underway at 1 o'clock Eastern time. Baltimore. Down by 26 points with 14 minutes to go. Ball on their own 34. Jones has to throw. Has the time. Across the middle, Lydell Mitchell. And he gets five, six, seven, eight yards. Before put down by Jack Lambert. Well, if Pittsburgh hangs on to this John Brody, Mitchell's slow in getting up. I remember that game, the opener. Pittsburgh and Oakland. Pittsburgh leading about five minutes to go. Oakland came back to win it to start. The Steelers are on their down spiral. There were some reports of dirty play. There's some lawsuits since. I know where I'm going to be next Sunday afternoon by my television set. Huh. I don't blame you. Second down and two to go. Lido Mitchell, who has shaken up before, tries to get the first down, and I think he's got it across the 45 yard line. The ball game. Can never be considered out of hand this early with a man like Burt Jones and an offensive unit like the Baltimore Colts. But the offense and defense of Pittsburgh has been so great. Pittsburgh is shutting down the Baltimore offense. Pittsburgh with its offense controlling the ball against the Baltimore defense. That it looks unlikely, but we shall see. First down. Raymond Chester off his hands at the 46 yard line of Pittsburgh. Jim, it's very probable that you will see several several receivers open in the in the very intermediate zone between six and ten yards, uh, because that way Pittsburgh is really uh, they're accomplishing what they intend to do. They're not going to allow somebody to go deep on them. If they do, Baltimore's broken their defense. Well, we can go back to the first Super Bowl ever won by an AFL team, the New York Jets against the Baltimore Colts, when Johnny Unitas finally came in. The New York Jets gave them those intermediary zone passes and. It, United's moved him for a touchdown in the fourth quarter, but it took over seven minutes to do it. Clock is on the side of the Steelers. Jones. Has time, drills it for Glenn Dottie, his first catch of the day. Mel Blunt has him at the 30-yard line. One of the few times today, Jim, that Burks had enough time when he's sending one of his wide receivers down the field to wait for him to make his break and hit him. And when you're able to do that, you can hit him if you're a guy like Burt. Again, Pat Haggard is going to call the clock and stop it until the Steeler defense gets downfield. Now he'll wind it again. Twelve and a half minutes to go. Dowdy to the right, car to the left. Ball is up to 29. This is a hit of a call. He's got it at the 10 yard line. Jones put it right in his knee top. You can see Andy Russell was trying to chuck him on the way out. However, Carr, Carr got by Russell. That's that's the key. He got by him pretty cleanly. That's not not totally clean, but he got got by him in time to be able to get his pattern run by the time Jones had to throw the ball and see the completion. Lambert goes out and Steve Furness comes in as a fourth down lineman. Like that a fifth down lineman. Whoops, and that is Furness that may have jumped. Unless he was brought offside by, of course, his close offense. Whoops. White, white. <laughs> that's Mr. White saying hello to Mr. Jones. Well, that's the third time Burt's handed White the ball. I think I think he must have by now the feeling that Dwight doesn't want it. As you see, the play is over. Dwight's pretty close, probably giving him a little lip. He decides to hand him the ball. It's not accepted. <laughs> Again, apparently a legal motion as they step this off against the Colts. 33 points stacked up by the Steelers. Nobody scored that many against the Colts all year long. Seven points only for the Colts. Dowdy to the right, hard to the left. It is Greenwood, Green, Furness, and Banazak to front four. In the middle, Raymond Chester could not hold on to it. Lambert gave him a shot. <laughs> and Lambert says he took a shot, and it should be offensive interference. 
Well, there's only one problem that, that Pittsburgh can get into now, and that's kind of getting uh, into a celebration ceremony before this ball game is over, and they want to make sure they don't. Uh, Jack Lambert will keep the pot boiling until the final gun's over. Oh, uh, you see the last the last push belonged to Chester, but the three or four before it, I, I do believe, belonged to Jack. And Allen comes in. Beautiful team. Fifth defensive back, second down 15. <laughs> Blitz is on, he gets it away, it's headed for Carr, and it's off. Look, and a hat is thrown by an official. That means he stepped out of bounds, Jimmy. Good coverage by Mel Blunt. That was Jack Fetter, the line judge, who threw the hat to say that had he caught it, it would not have been good. Because Carr had stepped out of bounds and come back. Ball is on the 16-yard line, third down now. And 15 to go for the first down. They're using Green, Furness, and Banizak up front now, and Taves joins the other three linebackers. They've got your 34 defense. 11-32 to go in the game. And a game dominated thus far by the Steelers. Don't try to get something going here now. Jones says blitz is on, he gets it away. Dowdy's got the football. Dowdy as the flag goes down inside the five-yard line. Oh, by the back judge downfield. Dowdy made the catch. Interference. I'm surprised if they don't take this penalty, Jim, because the interference, I believe, would be a first down, and otherwise it'll be fourth. You got it. The ball is back on the nine-yard line, and John said it would have been a fourth down at the four, and they have to get to the one. So they'll take the penalty, 11-27 to go. Jones trying to get him into the end zone. They found it only once so far. That was on a pass of 16 yards to Roger Carr, who now comes to the left at the bottom of your picture. Blunt's right up nose to nose on him. Look at it. Mitchell running the ball. Pratt in front of him to throw the block. Mitchell down for the first down, I believe. Don't think you can get a first down you can't here, unless you go into the end zone. <laughs> Let's take a look. They're, they're playing pass all the way. When your linebackers are playing pass, it's pretty easy to get outside Second and get and into the secondary. You can see him playing pass got hooked. Lydell Mitchell takes it down to the one. Where right does second down after Wagner made the stop? Lock is running, 10.50 left. Roosevelt leaks, touchdown. And for the second time in the game, Baltimore gets in the end zone. And as you watch this, no one has scored a touchdown rushing against the Steelers in the last nine games and three quarters until this one. Well, I'm sure that Pittsburgh, even though Baltimore did score, and it does help them, feels like they've accomplished their purpose. They took about three or three and a half minutes off the off the uh, the clock, and uh, even though they hate to give up seven, it really wasn't too harmful. Linhart in to add the extra point. National Football League's leading scorer flag is down. Oh, wait a minute. Offside, Steelers, so the point remains. 10.44 to go. We're in the final quarter here in Chile, Baltimore, where most of these 60,000 fans are very disappointed because the scoreboard shows the Steelers are winning the ball game. 33 to 14. On the point after, Linhart will kick this ball off from the 40. The question in the minds of the Steelers is, how far is he going to kick it? A minimum of 10 or just boot it away with 10.44 to go? Most of the people are up as though he is going to try the onside kick. That's the only thing that could really hurt him. And that's what happens. And it's fallen on very quickly by Benny Cunningham. And belongs to the Steelers at midfield. 
Uh, Joe Garagiola, Tucson Open, Saturday and Sunday, January 15th and 16th, kicks off another year of exciting golf action on NBC. And Mr. Brody and I can hardly wait. We've got six men's tournaments, two women's events, the Ladies International in April and the LPGA Championship in June. I mean, in addition to the Tucson Open, the Bob Hope, the Florida Citrus, the Greater Greensboro, the Houston, and the Pleasant Valley Classics. The biggest schedule of golf ever in our network's history. Reggie Harrison bounding around off a couple of players. Keep in mind, Franco Harris, with 132 yards on 18 carries, has gone out with bruised ribs. And Rocky Blyer, who only carried the ball once and lost the yard on that play, sprained a toe. I would imagine that should the Steelers be called on to play a week from today out in Oakland, both would be ready. I don't think those sprained toes are going to hold him back too long. Second down and nine. L.C. Greenwood looking on. The Colts would like to shut down the Steelers here and get the ball again. But Bradshaw winning the throw. He's not been intercepted yet today and won't be there. That's Swan and a flag goes down. Down in the holding area, too. Down at the 45-yard line. Jim Chansky made the stop of Lynn Swan, but everybody is walking back. Well, Jim Clack was having a little talk there with Fred Cook. Clack has been called twice for holding thus far. Let's see if number 50 gets it this time or one of his teammates gets the honor. 216, he ought to be given a couple holes a game. Holding, number 57. Ah, this is Sam Davis. Takes the ball back to the 42, second down and 19 to go. Second down and 19. Starwood to the right, Lewis to the left, Swan out of the game. Bradshaw swinging it out there to Fuqua. Fuqua turns it upfield. That's Brian Sawler. He's got the chance, but he's got the first down inside the 30 yard line. Bradshaw completes yet another pass, and Fuqua turned it on. Jim, that was, that was his little trail pattern the whole way. As soon as the ball was snapped, Bradshaw was going to Fuqua. What set it up is outstanding offensive line blocking. You can see they came out there. Jim Clack made a perfect block. That was uh, Sam Davis, who was already outside, kick, kicked the cornerback out, and all Frenchie had to do was run. Outside, you can see John Stallworth blocking Whoops. Mumford, and those kind of blocks <laughs> make it possible for long runs. First down, here comes Fuqua again, and again he's going to get good yardage. Rolling inside the 20-yard line. Bradshaw, 14 for 18 for 264 yards. And three touchdowns. Burt Jones today, 11 for 24, 144 yards and one touchdown. And whereas Bradshaw has not been intercepted, Jones has been intercepted twice. He hasn't had the most optimum of circumstances to operate in. Jim, but uh, Bradshaw has definitely stolen this ball game away. Mike Lewis to the left. Bradshaw in that nine game winning streak. Mike Kruzik, a rookie, started six of them and won them. Bradshaw was injured. There's Fuqua. Well, Frenchy catches a pass and goes to the right for big yardage. Frenchy gets a handoff, goes to the right for big yardage. Now he goes to the left and gets more big yardage down inside the 10. And the consensus of opinion around Memorial Stadium was that the reason why Bradshaw was starting is because he's been in the Super Bowl twice before. He has postseason experience. <laughs> well, he's also been an outstanding quarterback in the oh. past. It's just that he hasn't played the last six or seven games. The one start he did get uh, against Houston last week was not up to his standards. That's what I think had everybody concerned. Well, today is up to his standards and more. <laughs> Three wide receivers in there on second down and four. The ball at the 10-yard line. Bradshaw. Hands to Reggie Harrison, bursts up the middle, touchdown, Reggie Harrison, his second of the day. And the Steelers can count their tickets to Oakland. Yes, sir, when you get somebody down, stomp on them. That's an old cliche, but it sure applies. Their offensive line is running the defense of Baltimore right out of the ballpark, and the running backs are doing the rest. What an incredible story for the Pittsburgh Steelers. And everybody who follows the National Football League knows it. One and four, counted out by many, needed help from Oakland to knock off Cincinnati to win the division championship as they both wound up 10 and four. 
And now it looks like the Steelers and Oakland, not the best of buddies, are about to get together again. The Steelers are just showing their appreciation for Oakland's uh, victory over Cincinnati today. Ray Mansfield is thrilled. He kicks the <laughs> extra point. Mansfield adds the extra point, and Pittsburgh now leads Baltimore 40 to 14 with seven and a half minutes to go. Look at Terry. Well, since 33 points were the most scored against the Colts this year, I guess you would follow that if they get 40, also the most points scored against the Colts this year. The least that Baltimore scored all year was 14, and they lost that game to New England. And they've only got 14 points here. Bobby Walden's kick goes out of bounds. I'm not quite sure how badly that full groin muscle of Roy Jarellis is. We knew he had one before he came into the game. But with the game getting rapidly completely into the hands of the Steelers, they can afford to go with a Bobby Walden kicking off and a Ray Mansfield kicking off. Well, they couldn't afford to be without him next week out in Oakland. I think they just got the maximum out of uh, out of the Ranger Ray Mansfield uh, with that one he slipped over the goalpost for a point. I figure he he thinks he's done his job. Let somebody else have a go at it. Seven and a half minutes to go. Walled into the kickoff again. Look out, that's Ron Lee with Bruce Laird almost knocking him down. Ron Lee's got good speed. West Virginia rookie gets out to the 45-yard line. Immediately after a game, grandstand. Highlights of today's playoff game. An in-depth report analyzing the outcomes of each of our contests thus far. And you know, I think that advancing onto the playoffs thus far are Minnesota and Oakland and Pittsburgh with one game yet to be decided. And that's in the NFC between Los Angeles and Dallas. Fred Jones has got to come out winging. Everybody knows that. And does. Rolling out. Roosevelt leaks. Here first down at the 45-yard line of Pittsburgh. But a flag is down back at the 39-yard line of the Colts. And it must be against the Colts because Burt Jones tried to kick the flag halfway across the field. <laughs> There's Mike Kruzik. He is a young rookie. That one was one and four and Bradshaw hurt. It looked like in Steeler Town it was all over. But Kruzik started six games and won every one of them. And there were some pretty big games among those six. And he played very well in them. Cincinnati. Miami. Cincinnati again. There's Mike Kruzik. He only comes from about 40 miles from here. And his parents used to drive up to Boston College to watch him play. And they drove to the Pittsburgh Steelers. They must figure they're home free. That about an hour they could get here from their home. And see the right kind of thing happen for their Steeler team, even though their son isn't playing thus far. Burness was off, and the flag is down as the ball is up in the air and out of bounds. Burness might have been in the backfield before Burton Jones got the snap. In any event, a flag is down. Steelers offside. Burt Jones this year, 24 touchdown passes. Only nine interceptions, better than 3,000 yards. A rating of better than 100. <laughs> 64, that's for Ness. As a matter of fact, in last week's game against Buffalo, a ball went off the hands of Dowdy when was intercepted by Buffalo's Doug Jones. Had that not gone off the hands of Dowdy, or if it simply dropped it, Burt Jones would be the leading passer in the National Football League, not Ken Stabler. But Stabler, who's in the playoffs next week, is the leading passer. I looked good yesterday. Look out, Burt Jones. Good maneuverability, but too many people there, and down he goes. I'm just running out now, and so are some of the Baltimore fans. This is a sellout crowd, and where we saw no empty seats at all before, now great patches of blue are beginning to appear across the way. Jim, I'm sure it's very disappointing if you're a Baltimore fan because the team really never has been in the game since they scored the first touchdown. And uh, when you've come as far as they have and played as well as they have over the past year or two years and haven't won a playoff game, I know it's disheartening. Hard to the right, Dowdy to the left. Block is running with less than seven minutes to go. 
Flag is down. Carr throws it out here to Don McCauley. McCauley gets out of bounds for 45. But remember, a flag is down. To repeat something I, that you will probably read in tomorrow's paper, and probably in the papers all week as we come up against the game against Oakland, the Steelers today have just been awesome. Offense, defense, very few mistakes. Not turning the ball over except one notable time when Harrison dropped the ball down at the two yard line. But they came right back shutting down the Colts. Offside on Baltimore takes the ball back inside the 30 yard line to the 28. Where it will be second down and are you listening? Second down and 28 to go. Chuck Knoll across the way with his staff. Bert Jones fires it for Raymond Chester, hard at the 40-yard line. Would have been nowhere near a first down. Mel Blunt was with him, and it's incomplete. I think that look pretty well sums it up from Bert's viewpoint. Third down and 27 to go. Well, yesterday. Those of you who watched all of the games saw Minnesota thoroughly dominate the Washington Redskins. The Redskins looked against Minnesota just about like the Colts are looking against the Pittsburgh Steelers with a real thriller being that New England Oakland game which Oakland survived. Pulled it out in the last seven to ten seconds. Third and twenty seven. Look out, Jones, all the way back to the 15-yard line. Lauren Payne. And a few whistles and a few heated folks. Let's take a look at the whole group. You'll see Dwight White on the right side of the screen. He occupies uh, Pratt. Lauren Taves, you can see, Burt Jones has enough time to throw the ball short, but he's got to go down the field. Taves polishes him off. With a little help from two or three of his pals. Ball is back on the 15 yard line and David Lee goes back to the goal line to punt it away. Lynn Swan comes in standing at midfield. 40 to 14 Pittsburgh 6.15 to go. Steelers are going to play Oakland next Sunday afternoon here on NBC. Here is Swan at the 38. Oh Lynn you know better than that. Gets back to the 35-yard line, where Darrell Luce makes the stop. Bach is stopped with 6:01 to go. We're in a very disappointed Memorial State in Baltimore, where the Steelers lead 40 to 14. That's the Baltimore Colt band playing. I think they're a little out of tune too. <laughs> Just one of those days. From the 35-yard line, Kruzik is your quarterback now. The rookie we spoke of, Eris Fuqua, getting out near the 40-yard line. Pittsburgh has been in control, although at one time it was 9 to 7. Pittsburgh. Kruzik is going to throw the ball and loops it out to Reggie Harrison. A couple of men there, including Stan White and Bruce Laird. It'll be third down. That little pass picks up a yard. Third down, flat out to Oakland. Kruzik has the time, delivers the football. That is T Bell, first down across the 50 yard line, down to the 47. When you say had a lot of time, you are right on the mark because that time Bell ran all the way downfield almost to the 40 yard line, put the brakes on and came back six yards. By that time he was open, so Mike hit him. Randy Grossman comes in. <laughs> and you can take the end of the story from there. You plus. We will decide who is the Super Bowl champion. Throws it to Reggie Harrison. Harrison tries to get outside a block and does, and Schulter knocks him down, but it's a first down at the 31 yard line. I think he can do it. You and Bell to the right, and Cruzic back to throw under pressure and steps out of pressure. Looking, delivers the football. That is T Bell, tackled first down inside the 20 yard line. And there he showed you some good pressure back quarterbacking. Oldham made the stop. That's something you can't teach, Jimmy. He goes back in the pocket. You feel those the on-rushing linemen. 
That time he got, actually got a chance to see one. Then he kind of slipped under uh, Manfield's block. Hits Bell right on the run. That's the way you'd like to have all your quarterbacks do it. As they let it run down to two minutes, that's the two-minute warning. Our tickets are available because until...